talking about. So I have here with me today, Sharon Davis. And let's give it up for Sharon Davis because she is amazing. Y'all know, y'all don't even know yet. Listen, I am Queen Educator Robin. And I just love, 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 love to connect and to network. I love education. And I believe that everybody is educating somebody somewhere in some way, but we want to make sure they're doing it well in excellence and equity, right? And, and, and happy doing it, right? So I have Sharon here and she's somebody who, in my opinion, embodies that. Say hello to the people. Hi, Facebook world. Saturday morning. Hope you're up and ready for a great day. Yes, I'm time to tell you. I don't know if I was up and ready today. I was tired. I'll tell you what. So I had to do a little bit of self-care. Go for a little walk. See my, my little God baby. You know, I just just the things that sometimes get overlooked. Then I called Sharon. I said, what you doing? <laughs> what, you, what, what, what you been doing? And she was talking a little bit about some of the things that she does. And one of the things that we do that are in common is to make sure that we understand how to be well so that we can do the things that we need to do well. What do you think about that, Sharon? What do you think about that? Um, yes, I woke up actually extra early this morning because I started a class, mindfulness-based stress reduction practices. It's a eight-week eight week course. And it actually, this um, the leader is focusing on educators because mm -hmm. it's stressful out there you know, in the world today between pandemics and racial inequality and just trying to be a teacher and an educator. And so this is a way to, to reduce stress in the moment and develop a practice so that we can stay grounded and hold space, not only for ourselves and the people in our lives that we actually love and care about, but also show up for our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's my little background. So that's what that's how I started my morning. So I'm feeling pretty zen at the moment. Um, have some peace, ready to realign myself, and I'm ready to get started. Yes. Well, it is like every day I feel like that I have an opportunity to get some peace, to take the time for myself. Is is like I, I'm trying to work on not taking that for granted. I am a workhorse. I'll tell you that. I'll be like, I'm working on all this stuff. And sometimes it's like, what are you doing? Like I, my body will be like, what are you doing? How do you respond to your body when it's telling you, you need peace, you need some, you need to chill, you need to breathe. Like, how do you respond to that? There, um, particularly when I was working full time in a school district, I remember I would say, okay, it's Friday and I'm going to cocoon all weekend. Mm. And I would just slow down, you know, um, take the phone calls that, that were necessary, but I, I would call it cocooning and that would just give my body time to relax, um, order healthy food <laughs> or just eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and um, just give myself time to heal. And then on a regular day, um, any day, it's really, I call them take little snacks, bite-sized snacks. And those snacks are time for me to regroup, whether it's just sit, sitting in a car an extra five minutes and getting my gospel music on, mm -hmm. right? Or if I'm home having a little five minute dance party. And sometimes it just means that I'm just going to sit quietly and pay attention to my thoughts and just do some mindfulness work um, and, and some meditation. So I think you have, so for me, I have practice daily practices and then I have like spontaneous practices for when my body starts to feel, um, you know, a little trembly or too many thoughts are bouncing in and out. I, that's when I was like, it's time to take a snack. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and not and I say snack because it's, it's and try to and, and try not to go get a tasty cake or a cupcake or try not to do that mm -hmm. but really to do something that's going to kind of calm my mind sometimes it's hot water and lemon during the day that just kind of calms me down um so I, I really I'm not going to be any good to myself or anyone else if I don't take the time to check yeah. in with myself and then, and then do something about it so that I can realign and regroup. Yeah. 
Now, I really appreciate you so, um, sharing the simple things. I know we jump right in. We didn't even do a bench introduction. That's what I did. Sometimes I just jump right in there. And sometimes when I'm thinking too hard about like, okay, what am I, what do I need to do? No, sometimes just jump right in there, do it. Um, and it kind of connects for me to that very thing. Not like, okay, Robin, you have to take care of yourself. You got to do all these different things that I'll start thinking about making all these plans and then I don't even do it. <laughs> like it, this is just kind of how my life has been. So lately I've been just like, I got to jump right in. Let's get right to it. Life is so short, you know, um, and in many instances and, um, but then while we have time, what are we doing with that? And so I appreciate you talking about like, you're not going to really be any good to anybody else if you can't really take care of yourself. Talk to me about your journey. Now you said you've been in education for a very long time. Um, talk to me a little bit about the journey through like just becoming, becoming who you are. Um, and Cause you, to me, embody like just uh, going deeper in the mindset of who are we, why are we here? What are we doing? And as educators, how, what, how can we make sense of all of this? Or are we just going through the day-to-day -day routine? Talk to me about Sharon's journey. Um, I would say that, um, where would it start? So I started out like, yeah, I started out, um, went to college, started teaching my favorite grade, which was kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered that there were some students I wasn't able to reach. I couldn't understand why. And then I went back to school to become a learning specialist to understand why students learn different ways. And um, I worked as a, um, like I said, a kindergarten teacher, and then I became a, a learning specialist. Mm -hmm. And then I had children and then life changed <laughs> when I had children. And um, I guess around 19, in around 2000 is when things really um, changed for me. Um, one day I was coming home. Um, I had my I have two children and we were coming home, um, driving them from school and they would always kind of compete over who's going to tell the story first. So we went, I did this little thing where they had to tell me about, um, I mean, whatever birthday, I mean, whatever day of the week, if it was an odd day that my daughter could go first, it was an even day that my son could go first. It was based on their birthdays, odd and even. So one day they were in the car and they were just yelling and I get home and, you know, they were just talking to each other, kind of competing on who's going to talk. And I was like, you know, it's, today is the third. So therefore, you know, whose turn it is to tell me the story first. So, um, you know, it's going back and forth in the car and I get home. And again, this was um, like around 2000. And there was like an answering machine. We had an answering machine. Are you are you are you old enough for an answering machine? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so there was this little device that was on the table, on the little side table that was blinking. So it was an answering machine. And so I, you know, as usual, push the button to see if anything's going on. And it says, Hello, I'm, I don't know, Katie. I'm calling from the Oprah Winfrey show. And I said, okay. I need you two to go in the kitchen, go eat whatever you want to eat. I just need to, I, someone, Oprah show, I need to figure out what's going mm -hmm. on. So I um, I listened to, to the video and they said, I'm the producer. I'm one of the producers, the Oprah show. We want to I, give me a call because we want to have, we really want to talk more to you, see if you can be on the show. So at this point, being an Oprah-holic, I'm just kind of like lost my mind. And so... It was serious. I called and spoke to the producer and they they received a, um, a little email that I had written about um, living your best life. Mm -hmm. And so um, they said, well, we would love to have you uh, come on a show. We need you to send us pictures and videos of you with your family and working. And I was like, OK. And I had to like FedEx it immediately. So I go to start looking for pictures. I go to start looking for videos and I'm going through years of pictures and I discovered one thing that I wasn't in the pictures. So I was, I had lived about, I don't know if I was 40, maybe four, I don't know, maybe 40, 38, <laughs> had lived all these years and I discovered that I wasn't even present in my own life. One, one picture had like an arm <laughs> and wow. the other one, I was like far in the background. Mm. It became so clear to me that I wasn't present in my own life. Mm. So at that point, um, Oprah was, um, it was culminating an activity, which was live your, um, live your best life series. And I just really, at that point decided that I was going to make myself a priority in my own life and show up for myself. And so I did, they did fly me out for the Oprah show. I didn't get to be the guest, but I was in the audience 
and which is also an amazing experience. But I began to to really question what it is I want in my life and then start taking steps to making those things a reality in my life. I'm I'm over here trying to keep it together. I'm gonna just be honest with you right now. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So I wasn't present in my own life. Mm. Like I just wanted to sit with that for a second, like that right there. First of all, I didn't know any of that. Congratulations and kudos to you. Like people don't know, you know, like your story and where you've been, where you've come through and been through unless you tell it, right? And so I appreciate you being on here, taking some time to tell that story. I did not know that. I think that's amazing. But it like, like it hit my heart really, really quickly. Like I wasn't present in my own life. How many people right now, if you're watching this on the replay, please like comment. I mean, honestly, how many feel at times that you're not present in your own life? And not only that, you may not even know that you're not present in your own life because you're doing so much. I really, this is what I'm kind of like gleaning from what you're saying. Um, and it is a, a pandemic that we face all too often in life now in America. I mean, I can only speak for that because I live in America. And so many women that I talked to last month, I got an opportunity to just um, meet, not just meet, but um, share so many wonderful women when we celebrate, celebrated uh, Women's History Month and Sharon was one of them. So she's my first guest in April to really like delve deep into the story of why this is such a pandemic that we are not really present. Some people may not even be present. They think they're present. They're doing all these things. We're doing all these things. Our children are watching us. And we've got to realize that it's not cliche when we talk about self-care. It shouldn't be. It's not cliche when we say we need to take time for ourselves. And then we have to shift the mindset of like, I'm giving my whole self to my to everybody and to my children because they deserve it. Yes, they do. They deserve you to have the best of you though. Sharon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I often say when I'm working with clients or when I'm with my friends that our, our children are not going to treat, and this is, this is, this is in the Oprah world, right? Our okay. children are not going to treat themselves the way we treat them. Our mm -hmm. children are going to treat themselves the way we treat ourselves. So if we don't give ourselves the oxygen first, if we don't take care of ourselves first, that's what we're going to see. You know, it is likely that that is what we're, that's what we're modeling for not mm -hmm. only the children that we see, um, in our families, but also for this, if we're, if we're educators, also the children that we, you know, support in schools as well. Mm. Sometimes we show up, we're sick, oh, but I'm gonna come in anyway. You know, it's okay to say, you know what, I'm sick and I'm going to take care of myself. So tomorrow you won't see me. I was here today, but tomorrow you will not see me because I'm sick. It's modeling self-care because that's all there is really. Well, that's not all there is, but that's, that's the foundation. I mean, if, if you're not taking care, it's just the same thing. We're not taking care of ourselves. How, how are we that good to anybody else? How much good are we to other people? I'm so glad you said that because it, it reminded me of a quick story. As y'all see on the back here, it says International Children's, um, uh, what, is, what, did I call, what is it called? It's April 2nd. Can't even see it clearly on there. Inter International Children's Book Day. So because we're both kindergarten teachers, we have been kindergarten teachers. I can share that. It's one of my favorite grades to teach for kindergarten. And so Sharon has told me that she has also been. It, I want to make sure that we take a, a look at a book today that connects directly to what we've been sharing today. And that really is about care and um, understanding that we matter too. Um, and if you are an educator out there, I want to share my quick story before I read this book, because this is what, how I even got this from, a, from an educator. So it's called The Good Egg. I'm going to have to take my background off so that you guys can actually see it. Um, one of the things I heard Sharon say was like, no, take a day. If you need to take a day off, take a day off. If you're not well, don't pretend you're well, because you're going to, going to get worse. And so I was the culprit of that. And the sad reality is that sometimes people don't care. They're like, we have a, we have a little bit of teachers in this space that are left 
We already have people who have been burnt out. They're ready to go. They don't come to work. So the people that are there that show up and they're like, oh my gosh, you're doing it. Come on. It is like a, a prize in, in my, this is my reality. It was a prize like, oh my gosh, I'm here every day. I don't miss a day. Like I felt good about that, even though inside I was breaking down. Even though all around everything was cracking. But I was praised for being there, always ready, always on time. I mean, even from the people who, who, who told me, oh, I'm so excited that you're always here. I can always count on you. I couldn't always count on them. And when I decided to choose me, Sharon, <laughs> when I decided to choose me, I seen the reality of who the, the appreciate, what the appreciation was for. It wasn't about me and who I am and bring to the table. It was the fact that I, it was convenient and I was always there and it didn't matter if I was sick, I'm still there. And, and, and it didn't matter if my family was sick and going through things and I, and I needed to get to them. It didn't matter until I actually took the time off to heal, to get some time for me. And I did not realize, wow, you had the wrong mindset. You were locked in a system that says, Oh, you know what? If you do this, then you are like, you are praised. You get to the next level. And I, and I thought that was okay. It wasn't okay. It wasn't okay. So here's, and, and, and you can add to that while I'm taking this off. If you like to share anything, please feel free to jump in there. So I think often um, women are, are socialized to overdo, to overdo, overthink, for other people. And so it's important that we allow other people to hold on to what they need to do and that we find our identity um, in other ways. We associate with our identity in other ways. But when it's all you know, like like you talked about it, you said, my, you said our children, I'm just gonna shift here. Our children um, actually learn from what we're actually doing and I'm, I'm really, I can actually say my mom, she worked in the school system for so long, right? She was like, she, she just, she worked. She, everybody loved her, still loves her to this day. She's retired, but she realizes that, <laughs> you know, she, she probably should have took, taken more care of herself, but I follow what she did. I was like, okay, mom did it. She made it through, but there was a time she had a stroke while she was right at work mm -hmm. as a teacher, as an educator. Mm -hmm. She had a stroke. She was almost out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, it was really, I think that right there started to push my mindset away from, oh, mom, did, you know, she can handle, she's a strong woman. And, but mm -mm, she had a stroke while at work, forced to take off, forced. I think, that, I think it happens a lot. I think we, you know, I think the universe gives us signs. We get signs that maybe this is too much, you know, and sometimes it, it might be a little pebble or it might be a little drop of water and we don't pay attention until the piano falls on us. And then we go, oh, this was bad. I kind of thought maybe I should have did things a little differently. Um, and society supports that, especially with educators, because we're supposed to be self-sacrificing, do work in school, come home, call parents, and it's a, it's a trap. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really is. It's a trap. And I, I think when we have the issue of like burnout and not being well, and um, <laughs> look as I'm trying to adjust my background, <laughs> not being well and being burnt out and all that, um, you know, I wonder, I, I, like, I feel like some of the newer teachers today, they're like, look, mm, I'm not doing all of that. <laughs> and, and what's sad is that, you know, people actually, who, like they're good teachers, who literally have lost their passion, have lost their joy, have lost themselves. Some of them stay in there and some of them leave. And then we end up losing some really, really good teachers because what you said, the industry supports that. And it's like, dang, I have to choose between my family and my, I have to choose between my health and this. And I love children. Like, and you're made to feel bad. Like you're not here. You weren't here. I've had those things say, oh, well, you weren't here. Mm -hmm. well, why, oh, well, why did you take off if you, if, is there, is, is, is your, are your parents okay? Somebody has to die. Somebody has to, something has to happen so major for people to accept the fact that you've taken some time to get well for yourself. You've had to have this big thing. You have to explain to people what, <laughs> to like, is that acceptable for you that I'm taking off at this point? 
No, we have to shift the way we think about um, care for our educators, for our teachers. We won't have as much burnout and as much, you know, challenges in the schools if we did kind of rethink and change some of those systems that we have in place. So this book I'll read really quickly to you guys. Um, another coach and educator gave it to me right, right when I had taken some time um, off for myself to get well. Can I, may I comment on what you just said? Yeah, please do. I, I think it's two things. It's what's going on in our own personal lives, what's going on with our children and the people who we love and, and, and our parents. Mm -hmm. And then it's also just compassion fatigue from being in the school where you have you where you're involved in the lives of anywhere between what 25 to 250 students, <laughs> you know, where you know what's going on in their lives. So the compassion fatigue just of hearing you know, that um, at one point I had um, one student who was on hospice, one student that was recently diagnosed with cancer, and, and one who was recovering mm. from cancer. This, and, and, and it was just emotionally, and this was after knowing these students for several years, it was emotionally draining. And I think that learning self-compassion so that you're not giving it all away is just really important as well. It's, um, and I, sometimes I think schools don't recognize that uh, what, what compassion fatigue actually looks like, and that is real for educators. It's not just happening for, you know, doctors and nurses. It's, it's happening with educators as well. Mm. So then that's, that's kind of where we want to jump in with um, the story. So it's called The Good Egg um, from the creators of The Bad Seed. I'm not sure how many people have maybe read The Bad Seed, but this is I have, I'm like trying to get the series of these books. So since it's International um, Book Day, April 2nd, um, I just wanted to highlight this and I wanted to highlight Sharon because you know, the wisdom that you have around them, like I look up to people who are deciding to, to just be no nonsense around care. I do. Like people who are saying, you know what? Enough is enough. And you've had the experience, enough experience to say, hold on, something isn't right here. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And so I feel like we click, we click so well because of that. So The Good Egg by Jury John and Pete Oswell. I'm gonna take this part off. This is not just for children, y'all. This is, to me, this is, this is for adults as well. The Good Egg from the creator of The Bad Seed. Oh, hello. I was just rescuing this cat, you know why? Because I'm a good egg, a very good egg. It's true, I do all kinds of things like I carry your groceries, I'll water your plants, I'll change your tires. If you need any help whatsoever, I am your egg. I've always been a good egg. It's been this way from the start, even in my earliest days. Back to the grocery store. There were a dozen of us living together under one recycled roof. There was Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank. The other 11 eggs weren't on their best behavior. They weren't exactly good. They ignored their bedtime. They only ate sugary cereal. They threw tantrums. They cried for no reason. They broke their stuff on purpose. Mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, I tried to take charge. I tried to fix their bad behavior. I tried to keep the peace because I was the good egg. A very good egg. Nobody seemed to care though. <laughs> Every night I was exhausted. My, my head felt scrambled. Then one fateful morning, I noticed some cracks in my shell. Mm -hmm. Yikes. They were everywhere. 
my doctor said it was from all the pressure I was putting on myself, the pressure of making sure everybody was as good as me. I was cracking up, literally. Something had to change. I'd had enough. I told Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank that I was leaving. I left that night. I wandered from town to town. The hours became days, the days became weeks. I lost, I lost track of time. I was alone. Out there on the road under the stars, I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. Hmm. I took walks, I read books, I floated in the river, I wrote in my journal, I found simple moments to be quiet, I breathed in, I breathed out. I even started painting. <sighs> for once, I found time for me. And guess what? Little by little, the cracks in my shell started to heal. My head no longer felt scrambled. I started to feel like myself again. So I've made a big decision. I'm returning to my old carton and my friends. Besides, I'm kind of lonely out here. This time, I know what I need to do. I'll try not to worry so much. I'll be good to my fellow eggs while also being good to myself. <laughs> here we go. Hello, May. Howdy, Peg. Hey, Greg. Greetings, Clegg. What's up, Shell? Hola, Shelly. Ayo, hey, Sheldon. Hi, Shelby. Good day, Egbert. What's happening, Frank? How to do, other Frank? Sure, every once in a while, somebody's still a little bit bad, but it's not like before. Here's what I realized. The other eggs aren't perfect, and I don't have to be either. I'm okay with that. Yep, the old carton is back together. We're a solid dozen again. It's good to be home. <laughs> I like that. Love the illustrations first and the names and all that, you know, all the alliteration and all that. It's adorable, but the story I think is so many of us are cracked. <laughs> hmm. that's there's so many messages in this mm -hmm. like I don't know what messages and if you're watching this like on the replay and you're thinking like wow where you're watching it now what what stood out to you like what's one thing for you and while I was going through what I was going through I asked my family the same thing I took some time and I said hey I want I want to just read this to you guys <laughs> and like what's one thing that resonance resonates with your life that you think that um, you might have taken a, a advantage of or taken for granted um, as an educator, as a mother, you know, as as a, a business owner, as a leader, as a teacher, as a child. Like this is a children's book, but to me, I feel like it's really for everyone. What's one thing that might resonate with you guys? And what what is it that you love about the book? for me yes oh my gosh okay so when I was saying it before I was in a whole different place right um but for for now like what resonated for me was that my perspective of what it means to be a good egg um and thinking that I need to see things in a certain way shifted because it wasn't so much about you know, what everybody else was doing, not doing, how they were doing it, according to what I thought it was more about 
um, understanding that I am not, I don't have, I don't have to feel obligated to everything and everybody all the time. I can still be myself. I can still be helpful. I can still be su supportive, but I don't have to get so frustrated that I start to crack and I'm trying. And then what happen, What happens with me is that people, you know, rely on me and depend on me for, for many things because I position myself to be like, oh, I can help with that. I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. And it's like, and then I start seeing like, oh, I can help you with that. And I can help you not be on this space. You don't have to roll down here like this. You don't have to be said all the, like, I, it's not up to me to um, be everybody's person for everything but it is up to me to be okay with who I am and say no and take time for myself and and understand that I'm actually better for everybody else when I do do that so that's kind of where I'm at now with it I can't remember before where I was I think I was in a different space but each time I read this and I see my growth and healing it was re it's really about Robin, you can be you, you can be the most, you can do the most. People have always told me that you do too much. And I had to sit with that and say, okay. And it was Sharon when she spoke at a conference who reminded me of that um, a few months ago. And she, in her conference, I was like, she was like, what was it? Be too much. And I think I was cracking like an egg all around because I was trying to please too much instead of just be too much of who I am versus like, let me make sure I'm helping you. Let me make sure that, let me make sure you're not offended. Let me make sure that I show up this way for you. And I don't have to do that. I can be the most be too much and not dumb down who I am and what I do because people don't like it or because I think I, think I need people to like it. I just need to do the most and be the most of who I am, but take the most care of myself while doing it. Absolutely. Wow. That's a, <laughs> I, I, I like how you continually come back to take care of yourself. Um, cause it's important that we step into our greatness, right? It's important that we first recognize what our greatness is and step into it. And so for some people that's too much, but what I love about the, the good egg is the egg went away for a while. Mm -hmm. Right. And discovered that they like to paint. I think it was paint, you know? Yeah. So sometimes you have to take that break. You have to take a break. And sometimes it could just be it's on a, on a weekly basis. It's a few hours. It might be a few hours during the day. But sometimes after, you know, some people working from the time they were teenagers, you know, working for a couple of decades and never had time off to just stop and think. And so I think the, that the good egg did that, found out what they like. And instead of living, um, living really inside they took some time to figure out who they are inside and then was able to um now live in the live in the recycled carton <laughs> mm. <laughs> everyone else but still have space for themselves and i'm sure if you know if the good egg needed to leave again the good egg would leave again yeah. so okay. self-care is so important can i ask you so you have a business talk to us about your business and i want you to connect what even what you just said, like what does that look like as you are starting as as you had you haven't started, you are you you girl, you don't retire, you you doing your thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not always easy. And there's there's ups, there's downs, there's highs, there's low. How do you, you know, like maybe it's something from the book that you can relate to, but how do you manage it, manage that um as a as a leader? I think that the number one way I've had to manage it is is like the good egg did and move and and and, and get away. And I literally moved away. <laughs> I literally um, I was looking at moving out of the country, but I uh, that's still and and that's still out there. But I'm not um, actively pursuing it. Um, from being an educator, and um, you know we're very used to that system. So I basically you know I never really left education because I was in school myself went to college and it became an educator so to me the school you know what is the year there's only really 10 months in a year right <laughs> and it always starts in September so um, like I just think in school years so what I had to do was really walk away mentally um, from that routine mm -hmm. I had to walk away from giving myself away when um and then and and then people continually 
taking and wanting more and more do this now you're going to now you need to work with these students and so i had to really regroup and step away and really take some time to figure out what it is I want to do. I took early retirement and I really took it because of um, really three reasons. One was my mom was very ill and I needed, I wanted to be there for my mom. And similar to what you said, the school district wasn't supportive of that. There, my mom was in ICU and they're like, well, can't you come to work anyway? It was very um, unpleasant. <laughs> and um, the other reason is that the, um, that I retired early is because there was a almost a constant um, stream of complaints about um, the work that I was doing, which was frequently didn't make any sense. So there was a constant barrage of that. And then it was the changes in education where it was becoming more difficult. I work with a lot of special needs students, more difficult to meet the needs of the students. So um, it was just a lot of emotional um, things. And so I decided oh, I'm gonna retire early. And, um, and then I started um, really trying to, um, to determine how I was going to configure my business. And my initially it was working around um, um, racial literacy. That was my focus in um, going into 2020. And then things shifted after um, George Floyd's murder mm -hmm. and everyone was very interested and I was getting phone calls and I was doing workshops. And then it became, I had to take a break from it because I was not used to the amount of um, distortions <laughs> that people had around race and it was heightened it was the height of it was it's still high so i had to really take a break and look at it again so i think you always have to question you have to inquire and check in with yourself and say how is this going is what i'm doing now fitting what it is that i want to bring into this world my goal has always been um, my mission really has always been to help people see the greatness in themselves and see the greatness in other people mm -hmm. and celebrate it. And so when I, um, and that's, so that keeps me focused. Is, is this what I'm doing? Is this the next step? And sometimes um, I did need to step away. I also needed to surround myself with like-minded people like yourself <laughs> um, and people who are also um, believe in self-care but also want to serve as well and serve without sacrificing ourselves so um those things have been crucial mm. I, like everything that you say is, i feel like i'm here with somebody who is so seasoned in knowledge and wisdom right and it's and i and i say that because i meet lots of people younger older and i feel like sometimes i feel like people are going through the motions and are satisfied with a certain way of, you know, moving and being. And, I, and, and I'm, the reason I'm bringing this out is that I feel like it keeps us in a space of like, I'm doing this because I, because I just have always done it. One thing about you, Sharon, is when I met you, I just felt like you had, like there's a sense about you that just says, if I need care, I will take care. If, I, if it's time to leave, it's time to leave. It's not, it's not, if it's time to go higher and go to the next level, it's time to go higher and go to the next level. And so um, how do you spread your spirit and your, your message of just being better, seeing better, pulling out the best of people? Like, I, I love that about you, that you want to see people well, you want to see people be the best in themselves. How do you like, give us like a quick snapshot. Don't give them too much, you know, but how do people, how do you help people to do that? What do you help them do and how can they connect and work with you? So um, a lot of times we're not clear. A lot of times, you know, we're kind of, we're stuck and not sure where to go. We may know that we don't like what's going on, but we don't really know, you know, what we're going to do about it. You know, you feel, you know, you might've been a teaching for, eight years or more, 16, and you feel something's not right. Something feels different because the person you are at 22, 23 is not the same person you're going to be 33, 34. This is going to be very different. 
So what I do is when I work with educators and oftentimes not educators, I help them get crystal clear about the things that are most important to them in their lives and how to make those things a priority, overcome obstacles, to really question their thinking so that they can be really clear. And if you don't have a, if you don't have a clear target, how are you going to, how are you going to hit it? So it's very important that we know what we want. We name it. We put it out there in the universe, we see it, and then we have to look at obstacles. What are some of the patterns, some of our limiting beliefs that stop us, that keep us stuck? And most people, it's limiting beliefs. We have limiting beliefs. I'm too old. I'm not good at math. Mm. Um, or um, one thing that I really dealt with a lot is that people, if I succeed, then my family will be mad at me. Mm. Um, so when you start to change you know, for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. So as you start to move forward one way, people, it, it may cause your friendships and relationships to switch a little bit. But that's what I'm also there to support that. Um, I really, um, years ago, after my life coach training, I would say I was a life coach. And now I really believe that, um, you know, I'm a transformation coach. I really can help individuals get clear about what they want and then you know take the steps to to make that happen and a lot and and um I was speaking to someone recently and it it can happen really it can happen really quickly to the you know it's almost jolting that um that that once the clarity is there um how quickly there can be movement mm. Mm. I mean you mentioned a few things and I just I just want a second um, what you said about what you do, because I experienced that, like we work together, we support each other in this work and networking, but I can attest to every word that she's saying in just a short amount of time that I've known her to become clear and to be okay with, there's something that Sharon says all the time. <laughs> You're more than that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's powerful to me. You don't often hear people saying that to you. Sometimes people tell you to stay in your place. This is what you are. This is who you are. And they're telling you who you are and what you are. But one thing that I've experienced with working with Sharon is in connecting and networking and all that is that to often say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me, Queen, you're more than that. Stop putting yourself in a box. And um, <laughs> I think that's so powerful because we don't live in a world where you hear that a lot. I don't. I'll just keep it personal, local, and immediate. Where it's like, you're known for this, this is who you are. I was watching, I think it was T.D. Jakes a couple, about a week ago. And he said, you know, sometimes when you step out of a certain comfort zone that people are comfortable with you being in, they, it messes up their psyche. And they're like, no, 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 you're the, you're the educator queen. Like, that's, that's what you did. Like, you don't do, and uh, yes. But remember, I believe that everybody's educating somewhere, somewhere, in some way. And somehow like to somebody like parents or educators, entrepreneur business leaders or educators like you are educating somebody some somewhere about what you're doing and, and people are coming in so it's not just in the school system but when I think about those words that Sharon constantly says mm, you're more than that don't put yourself in a box is what I take away from you a lot of times don't allow people to put you in a box either but really know what it is really get in tune with yourself about what it is that you are passionate about doing what you're called to do and, and get clear, get clear, but don't limit yourself just based on like, oh, people always say that I this, people always say that I'm bad and you become that and then you may not be happy. So Sharon, when, you, when you're coaching and you're thinking about um, the person that you're working with, um, what's, like one, what's like one nugget you can give us to think about um, when we are getting connected with coaches? Because I feel like it's very important who you connect with and who you network with what's one thing that you want so if, you're gonna, if you're gonna work with a coach you have the first to me the most important thing is can they hold space for you mm. what i mean by that is in when you're communicating do you feel heard do you feel understood do you feel seen and Ooh. um are they able to kind of capture your essence that's if you're looking for like a transformation coach. If you want a business coach, I mean, it's still kind of similar, but you want to also obviously make sure they have a background 
um, in business. So for me as a transformation life coach um, and also an academic coach, it's really about, it's really the rapport that you have with the person and the knowledge that they have as well. And can they move you from here or there? And you have to kind of be present with yourself and give yourself enough time to, to see if that is, is actually happening. Yeah, it does not. I don't, um, it's, it, it, and so when I'm working with a client, it, it really goes both ways. Is, is it, it, it's either a good connection or not. And so sometimes um, it's clear that the person really doesn't want to change or is very stuck or might need to go get some counseling first. But I think that um, if you're looking to coach, to move, to get, to, to get unstuck, to mm-hmm. bring more fulfillment into your life, to, to see what your next steps are. You really want to make sure that, that person has the um, capacity to hold space for you. Mm. And, as a, and I will say that as a, a Black woman, I worked a, a little while ago with a, uh, I tried to work with a coach and it became very clear that it wasn't going to work because when I was explaining um, some of the experience of Blackness, it, 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 it just, whoosh, it wasn't she wasn't able to hold that space for me so I think it's really important that you really um you know connect with your whoever it is that you want to see coaching with a lot oftentimes I know I offer um you know a strategy session to see if there's a connection um and um and by the way you can go on the (laughs) schoolequitycoach.com if you're interested in, in coaching the school equity coach uh, dot com and um i think sometimes we need some sometimes we may need counseling and we need coaching but they're really two different things and i think the the coaching is really meant to move you forward where counseling is kind of like what happened and and, and, and what are we going to do now and um i think that um I don't know. I've had a coach for years, <laughs> different coaches because your life changes. You need them for different yeah. things. But I've always, I've had coach. I, I have a coach um, really ever since um, Oprah Winfrey <laughs> when I was on the show and Cheryl Richardson was like the coach at the time. And so I've, I've pretty much had a coach um, since then. So it's important that um, really that there's a connection. Mm. Thank you. And thank you for being here and thank you for being open and willing to share your story, share your journey. There's so much value in who you are, what you do. And um, there's so many people out here that miss out because we feel like, oh, we know it, we got it, we're good. But when you actually start to decide, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? I want you to all to think about who have you been introduced to? Who have you... um, you know, being kind of connected to that connects with where, where you are and where you want to go in your life and, and, and start to make some moves. Um, this whole thing each Saturday till the 16th is all about education healing. And um, sure, and I talk a lot about that. We have a lot of that in common. And I think that this is part of the, my healing, part of my healing journey. Like I, I read that story to you guys. I, I took some time for myself. Um, without explaining, without having to get permission. Um, I'm now in a space where I've decided that I'm not gonna wait till I'm all cracked to, do, to, to, to take that time. And it took coaches. It took me getting a part of sp- um, specific communities and groups and things um, that said, hey, Robin, you can go to another level. It, part of my wellness was to, I, had, I also had um, counseling but I also had a coach. So I appreciate you calling that out. I had both of those and I realized, wow, I never really had this before. I really had it. Like I had for people I talk to and I vibe when I'm giving and them and, and other people are giving to me, but this is different. And so I, re- I realized that's really where my healing came from. When I, when I said to myself, Robin, it's okay to have co- uh, counseling and it's also okay to have a coach. It's actually imperative to have a coach, especially if you have big dreams, because you know, we do the most, honey. We do the most, we do too much all the time. And I help people, what? Get rid of that baggage and hone their brilliance. And in order to hone your brilliance, what do we do? What, what Sharon and I talk about this all the time. What do we What do we need to do? We really got to look inside ourselves. And so we had that invisible, 
ideas and things that we that we really see like, oh, I'm going to do this. I have one. If you really want to go to the next level in your life, in your family's life, and you want to live a particular way, you actually can. I hope you take those ideas and what? <laughs> to those ideas for implementation so that you see the impact. And I honestly want to tell you truly and honestly, I met Sharon through coaching with others, like with another, within a coaching community um, that we're in a network that we're in. And, and my life has not been the same. It hasn't. And I'm, I'm saying that because it's a part of my healing. I actually healed by taking a stand for myself. And, and, and going against my norm and going against like, oh, queen, you don't need to do that. Or my family might even sometimes are like, are you doing all that? Yes, I'm doing all that. You need a coach that's paying money for it. Oh, yes, I am. And guess what? I will never go. I, I probably should have. I think I got more out of um, my coaches. At first, I was like, okay, I'm spending some money. And I got more than I expected. I actually got a lot of healing. There's still so much more for us to do in our lives while we're living so we want to make sure that we get to a space where we can um, take those ideas that we've been thinking about those dreams implement them so that we can impact not just our lives but our children's lives our school our students lives right impact the world the next generation and i know many of you who will who rock with me <laughs> I'm all about let's go to the next level let's go to the next level but I don't want to just keep talking about it I don't so 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 sometimes you lose people along the way because people are like oh you're doing too much continue to do too much while while I'm doing too much and you backing away we're gonna go ahead and take take them ideas and turn them into to impact for you okay and with you <laughs> so and that's the healing that I feel that I want us to, to see and so I'm just gonna close with um with that notion of can you I thank are. you first? Oh, yes, yes, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> so I want to thank you, Robin, for um, inviting me, um, you know, to take part in this. Um, is, it, is it a podcast? What is this? Listen, I'm still figuring out, like, because I like, I like podcast. I started a podcast, but then I was like, but can I do a video? What should I do? So I think, uh, I think it is a podcast. Okay, so I thank you. Feeling. Okay, so thank you for <laughs> inviting me. Um, Cause I don't always like, I don't like to always be in front of the camera. And I also don't always like to be live either. So thank you for doing that. And I want to say that um, I had an opportunity to hear Robin speak and um, the energy that she has, hopefully it's coming across, you know, in this, this video, because um, th that's the first thing you, you sense, you sense that this is a safe space. This is a person who can hold space. This is a person who can see me to the next level. And so Robin began to talk about putting down the baggage and literally she was putting down <laughs> the baggage, <laughs> putting down these things. And we all have baggage. We all have a story, but who would you be without your story? So let's, you know, put down the baggage, but that wasn't it. And then um, she went on to say about hone your brilliance. And what's, what's interesting about that is a lot of times we're expected to be mediocre. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, we're kind of expected to play small. And, and so it's important that find out not only what, what you're good at, but when you take what you're good at and what you love and you put it together, it starts to look a little brilliant. <laughs> and so what I've learned, um, from Robin and being around and, and being around being around Robin is that it's okay. It's okay for me to be too much and show up. And what Robin is also able to do is to see the potential and to help me get clear about what that is and, and what the steps I need to do to make it happen. And it's almost like intuitive and instinctive with, with Robin. She's able to kind of just, this is what you need to do. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get this moving. <laughs> like when she called me on the phone today, okay, Sharon, what you doing? <laughs> Let's get on this call. So just again, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for this opportunity. And I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I hope this was impactful. And I know I'm telling you, I'm impacted just by the presence of Sharon and her life story and her just just who she is coming authentically and so that's that is true right you know come on let's do it because I already know there's going to be an impact 
because you are amazing. And so are you. Anybody out here that's listening, you are amazing. You just don't always know how to get through and say, I, maybe I am. That's okay. Keep knowing that there is somebody out here that will help coach you through that, that'll be right in your corner. Come on next week. We're gonna we're going to go a little bit deeper next week in in our in our coaching chat Saturday coaching chat. And this is gonna happen all the way up until the sixteenth. So um, get in while it's free. Get in while you can because mm -hmm. I mean I'm telling you there's some I have some amazing amazing people that I'm connected to that honestly their impact is changing more than the world more than they even think it is. And I know that's true about you too. That's true about you too. So get connected with us. I put Sharon's information in the chat. Um, um, schoolequitycoach.com. Go ahead there. Go to everybodyeducate.com. You'll find anything you need if you want to connect with us or um, I have a, a, a strategy session. Come on, guys. You know that 2022, we're not going to end this year the same way we began it. We're not going to end this year without knowing who we are and the fact that we are world changers. If that's you, come on, get connected. And we just gonna do it. Let's just do it. And you, you will see the fruits of your labor and the impact. Let's get healed by doing the things that we have been called to do. All right, guys, bye. Take care. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs>